Hello, everybody. This is Mentor Lawyer with news about the Sarah Boone case. State of Florida versus Sarah Boone involving the murder of her boyfriend, Jorge Torres, or the alleged murder of Jorge Torres. She is charged with second-degree murder, but the case hasn't been proven beyond a reasonable doubt yet in a court of law. So what's going on? Sarah Boone was appointed her seventh attorney several months ago, and this was after many, many letters complaining about her previous attorney. So she got a new attorney a few months ago, and the case was getting prepared for trial. The new attorney is Winston Hobson. But then, in the beginning of this year, on January 16, there was a pre-trial conference, and Mr. Winston Hobson went to the hearing, apparently waived the appearance of Sarah Boone, and asked for a continuance. The continuance was granted, and the trial was reset for May of this year. This made Sarah Boone upset, and she wrote a new letter. She found out that there's a new judge in the case, and she wrote a letter to this new judge, Judge Cranick, where she indicated her frustration with her new attorney as well, with this seventh attorney. The letter was drafted and sent to the court on January 19. Then on February 1st, because I'm sure it took some time for the letter to get to the clerk, to be filed, and for the attorney to get a hold of it. On February 1st, Mr. Hobson filed a motion to withdraw as attorney for Sarah Boone. And in the motion, he went beyond the usual language of irreconcilable differences, and also said that there are ethical considerations. He doesn't specify what those are, but this is a little bit unusual language for a motion to withdraw. And so, he filed a motion on February the 1st, and a hearing has been set for February the 9th. Sarah Boone's letter and a proposed motion that she prepared for her to be included in all proceedings, or more included in her case, will be read to you shortly. I always come back to Deep Dive True Crime and or Mental Lawyer Justice Network for updates about the case. Here we go. Honorable Judge Cranick, finally, a new judge. It's strange how the Lord works as I was in the process of trying to disqualify Wooten after being my judge four years, and me still incarcerated with nothing to show other than seven different attorneys, not by choice. News clips of me walking in and out of the courtroom, and everything relative to my case permitted to be slathered on the global internet and in which I have not seen myself. I felt he was the ticket holder to my overly hyped, illicitly distributed, misconstrued criminal case— and great reason I am still here again, ongoing four years and seven attorneys later, not by choice. See my letter dated June 29, 23 on Clerk's website. While still waiting to properly elucidate the court, public and world, and after whatever the dysfunction was in the attendance part of my Mort recent PTC status hearing, which I am trying to ensure my automatic attendance futuristically, please see my draft motion included I am still trying to have my attorney submit on my behalf. I wanted to bring to your judicial attention the following information, so you and the world are aware it is not I who am ever delaying trial, as Wooten inappropriately accused me of doing in a past hearing, especially now you have mandated a trial date to be had in May, with no further continuances, leaving less than four months to put together and complete what should and could have been done already. What happened in all the four years prior? Please see all my correspondence online. To date, Winston E. Hobson has been my court-appointed attorney for 133 days and counting. To date, Mr. Hobson has only met with me one time, for a total of three hours, 11 7 To date, no phone calls have been received by Mr. Hobson as his phone does not work properly for further, immediate, much-needed communication to be made between client and attorney. To date, I have mailed five letters to Mr. Hobson trying to communicate my urgent need to speak to him. To date, I sent one letter to the investigator in my case to contact Hobson to contact me and see if he can assist in correcting the phone problem, also to inquire when anyone is coming. To date, I feel I am not being included or heard or cared about in my case again from the continued miscommunication again with Mr. Hobson, and time-consuming undiscussed entries are being made on my behalf the continuance I did not know about, the waiver of appearance I did not know about, along with other documents, and I am never sent copies of anything filed, so I know. I keep trying to tell him about with no response, 
furthering the already massive dysfunction in my four-year case. I was hoping in the PTC status hearing on Tuesday, January 16th, 2024, I could at least play catch up in the courtroom for five minutes, so many of my attorneys have done prior, including Mr. Hobson, in the one court date I've had for a continuance of a continuance, 103023, to express and emphasize the need for him to communicate it and schedule a second, very overdue meeting. I still have not even heard from Mr. Hobson about our missed PTC status hearing. What's the status? To date, one out of 133 days and counting attorney and his client have met. To date, three out of now 3,192 hours attorney and client have discussed partial general case information. To date, I still have not seen my discovery. Your Honor, when is the next status hearing, please? Especially since I, we, were not at the last PTC status hearing. And especially since I am trying to communicate with my attorney in more than one way to fully maximize and utilize the minute amount of time allotted before trial. My fair, appropriate, lawful trial. I still am wondering why, though, I've had to wait for four years for something to finally happen on in my case. Ask Judge Wooten. I wonder also, was I the oldest case on his docket? Either way, I'm still here, waiting patiently, and very excited to get this highly anticipated show on the road. I await your overdue and very needed judicial direction, supervision, and intervention. Thank you in advance, Judge Cranick. Welcome. Sincerely, Sarah Boone. Motion to be included in and allowed admittance to all defendants' pretrial conferences and hearings. Comes now, defendant. Sarah Boone, by and through her undersigned attorney, Winston E. Hobson, respectfully requests permittance to attend all my pretrial conferences and hearings ongoing until the conclusion of my criminal case. Per FRCP Rule 3220, the following is states to lawfully allow my inclusion, participation, and requested admittance. The trial court may hold one or more pretrial conferences to consider such matters as will promote a fair and expeditious trial. The defendant must be present at any pretrial conference, unless the defendant's presence is waived in writing or on the record by the defendant or by the defendant's counsel with the defendant's consent. In support, the defendant alleges as follows, 1. These pretrial conferences are for my personal, individual criminal case. If professional YouTubers, news channels, court TV, etc., are given permission and allowed entry to the courtroom for viewing, and the judge also is allowing the conferences to be streamed live with all the court minutes uploaded to the internet and world, I, the defendant, should be included foremost. Two, I may not have regular, consistent updates or communication with my court-appointed attorney, and by attending all my PTCs and hearings, I will know current status, important dates, casework being completed, changes in parties, time frames, expectations, all pertinent information I, the defendant, have a right to know, want, and need to regarding my case. All information is important, relative, and necessary to me. 3. I am not consistently included in the certificates of service and sent copies of any document being filed in court regarding my case, as requested numerous times by the defendant in writing and verbally in the courtroom, neither by the judge, the court, or my attorneys. By attending my pretrial conferences, I will know what documents have been filed, need to be, and will be for and in my case. Another way I can know what is going on in my case and being worked on. 4. In complete overall support, it is my right by law as an individual, defendant, and inmate to be included in any and all developments made in my case. It also is my right to finally achieve success in any and every aspect possible in my case. By attending and being included in my pretrial conferences and hearings, said success can and will be accomplished fairly, faster, properly. Wherefore, the defendant, Sarah Boone, respectfully asks the Honorable Court to grant my motion to be included going forward to all defendants' pretrial conferences and hearings. I certify that an original of this document has been filed via U.S. mail with the Clerk of Court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit, and that a copy of this document will be filed in the Florida ePortal to state attorney and all attorneys or other parties on court record on this 19th day of January 2024. By Sarah Boone.